Hi guys, Ancient Warrior. Welcome back to Prepping in Free America. Let's talk about getting getting the house prepared. Oh, housekeeping. <laughs> Better do some housekeeping. If you like what you hear here, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be the first kid on your block to know what craziness I'm talking about next, hit the bell icon with all. And leave comments. I, I will do my best to answer them within a timely fashion. Things are starting to slow down around me, so it'll be easier to do. Let's get the house prepared. What do you need to do? I live in a, pure, in a house that's got pier and beams. It means I've got about oh, 14 to 36 inches under the house on beams, big square beams, or big square piers under the ground. Every year I have to get out and cover the outside vents. Why do I do this? Well, it starts with, number one, it starts with the fact that I don't want to wake up to frozen pipes. This helps stop it. I've got some covers. Probably one in here, but I don't know where it's at right yet. Some styrofoam covers that go over my faucets on the outside. To keep them from freezing. Any pipes I have running on the outside that's are wrapped in wrapped in uh, what I call pool noodles. My air conditioner, my heat pump, my outside air conditioning unit gets covered with a uh, tarp, and I cover it completely up. Believe it or not, I was told by a guy who works on those things that they can still freeze in the winter and damage themselves. Then let's go inside the house. I have things that go on the bottom of the on the bottom of the uh, doors because most houses especially if you're living in one like me that's 70 years old the doors tend to have air gaps at the top and bottom one of the problems I have here is my foundation floats a little bit hopefully next year that'll be repaired So my doors get out of kelter a little bit. Either I get a gap across the top or across the bottom. Then you go to your windows. Now, most of you ladies probably have nice window treatments and stuff. Great. I'm a bachelor. I've got many blinds, and that's about it. I am not kidding you. Those things do not block cold. What I do is I tack up. Now I have I have fleece blankets for every window. <coughs> Excuse me. The cool, cool, wet air kind of get messes with my lungs now. You cover every window. And especially the ones facing north. For me here, the, the north, north facing windows are the ones that are gonna, gonna allow the most cool, the colder air to seep in. 
And for those of you like my mother, who believed that you had to have light in the winter, you know, my mom used to, every day, she'd open up all the blinds and then complain about the, the heating bill. Didn't make a lot of sense, but she was still my mom. Still is my mom. I keep blinds down. I cover windows. These are things my grandparents taught me from the... Because this is what they had to do in the in the 20s and 30s to stay warm because central heating and air hadn't quite yet been invented. Any place you can get a draft. Try your best to keep your heat at about 68 to 70. With everything covered up the way it is, you should be able to hold that temperature. Folks, these are just home, just little, little tidbits. We're going to talk about your beds next. Well, not this week, but next week we're going to talk about how to make your bed so that it, you can stay warm if the heat goes out or the electricity goes out. You know, like I told you, last year in February, from the 13th through the uh, 21st, I believe it was, 22nd, we had that extremely hard, cold, hard freeze here. And people froze to death in it. Some right in their homes. So, with that being said, folks, remember, it's better to have the stuff and not need it than need it and not have it. And if you're prepping, you're going to live free. I'm the Ancient Warrior, and we're out. <laughs>